All right. So for 1.4, uh, we're going to talk about conditions and loops. And so in this lesson, what we're going to talk about is uh, writing programs that carry out different instructions based on one or more logical conditions that are true. Um, we'll write programs that repeat instructions until a specific event occurs. And so what we, what we're, the question that we're really uh, answering is, would you like to specify conditions that control how your program runs or whether it runs at all? And so let's look at the following program. Uh, this is a simple example of an if-then uh, statement. And the way it works is it says, if clock.day equals 1 and clock.day or clock.month equals 1, then text window dot right line happy new year and if. So what this means is if that statement is true, in other words, the computer will read the clock on your computer. The program will read it. And if it is the first day of January, then it will print on the screen happy new year. Uh, if not, then it just, it just kind of stays there. Um, or in other words, it won't print it. So now same kind of thing, uh, but we're going to give it two options. So in this next program, we have an alternate action to perform if the condition is false. And so what this is saying is, is if the clock hour is less than 12, then right, did you have breakfast? Now, if that's not true, it just goes on to the next line, which is end if. And that kind of closes out this if then statement, and it just moves on to the next line. And it says, if the clock dot hour is greater than 12, which means it would be after 12 p.m., right, afternoon, then print in your text window, right line, did you have lunch, and if. And so basically, when you run this program, if it's early in the morning, it'll say, did you have breakfast? In other words, if the clock on your computer is uh, 11.59 a.m. or earlier, it'll print this statement. If it is 12.01, it'll print this statement, did you have lunch? Now, in programming, you could do that same thing um, in more than one way. As a programmer, you could choose what's best. In this example, you might have noticed that the second condition in the program reads, repeats a lot of information of the first. So uh, if we look at that again, we said, if the clock dot hour is less than 12, then text window right line, did you have breakfast, if, or, and if. Then if the clock hour is greater than 12, then text window dot right line, did you have lunch. Well, we could reduce that. If the clock hour is less than 12, then you print the following line, did you have breakfast? But if this first statement isn't true, then I could carry out the second statement, right? Because if it's not less than 12, then the opposite of that would be that it's greater than 12. So basically, both of these uh, programs do the exact same thing, but this one is a little less work. And the way it works is if I, my computer clock program is less than 12, then it'll print this line. If it's not less than 12, then this statement is false, and it just moves on to this else statement, and then it'll print the other one. Both programs give you the same result. You can use fewer if, then, and, and if keywords if you use the else keyword. Now here's another variation of that. In this particular program, uh, the first thing it'll do is open up the text window and it'll print, write out a number to the screen. The cursor will blink and then you can write a number and it will save that number in the variable number. Then it'll take the number and divide it by two. So this remainder equals math dot remainder. This is modular arithmetic. So it'll take whatever number you plug in, divide it by two, and if the remainder is equal to zero, then we know that it's divisible by two, and so your computer will print off the line, then the number is even, because any even number is divisible by two. Um, here, if it's not divisible by two, in other words, if it's an odd number, then the remainder will not equal zero. Right? It either equals zero or it doesn't. So if this is a false statement, it just skips over that line, else, text window right, the number is odd, and if. Okay? So when you're writing a complex program, you want to check to see whether the user typed an even or odd number. Um, there are practical applications for this, but really, truthfully, 
any conditional statement that could either be true or untrue can we can plug in in here we, we just happen to use this remainder command so now we could do the else if which is a, a kind of a variation of else um, and let me explain the logic of how this works so the first line in the program will say write the line what is the current temperature in degrees Celsius then by assigning the variable temp and the, var the value that we plug in for temp will be uh, entered in here and we can read that in other words this is the fancy way of telling the computer to take some input that input is then stored as temp we really should have read number but that's okay but if it reads the temp and the temp value is less than five then it'll print it's a very cold day now if that's not true then it moves on to the next line if else if temp is less than or equal to 15 then it'll print it's a cool day well if I entered in 38 this statements false this statements false if else moves on to the next statement if the temp is less than or equal to 25 then print it's a warm day now if else if else just is it's it's a way of saying if the first statement above is not true then try this else if if that statement isn't true else if and then when we get to the last one we have to use just the word else because that's the last one and so what are we saying we're saying that let's say I plugged in 29 degrees well this would be untrue or false so I'd move down to this line untrue so that would be false else it's else if move down to this line now if this is false and this is false and this is false my last statement has to be true so we would just say else it's quite a hot day and if and that closes out this whole little loop in this example each condition contains a unique statement that the computer evaluates when the computer evaluates the statement is true the computer performs the operation for the condition that proceeds to the end loops and small basic programs you can use a loop to instruct the computer to run one or more statements more than once you can use the for loop if you know how many times you want the computer to to repeat the instructions you could use the while loop if you want a program to repeat the instructions until a specific condition is true let's explore some loop statements now this is nice because when we do for end and for loop in general you use for end uh, for and for loop to run a code with a spitz you know a specific number of times to manage the type of loop you create a variable that tracks how many times the loop is run so in this one we would say 4a equals 1 to 10 all right then we would write in the text window the variable a and 4 so now what that means is it'll print 1 because the first time it comes through it starts at 1 then it prints 1 then it and 4 well it's not at 10 yet so it goes right back over and loops back but now it's no longer 1 it's 2 it's not at the end yet loops back around now a equals 3 4 5 6 and what it does is it prints 1 through 10 now I could go in and say text window dot right line 1 text window dot right line 2 text window right line 3 or if I'm gonna do some sort of sequence like this I could just make a for and for loop in this example the variable contains a value that increases by 1 every time the loop runs now you could use the same concept to print the multiplication table so I could say text window dot right line multiplication table now I could arbitrarily choose a number and let the number equal 5 then I could say 4 a equals 1 to 10 when I text window dot right and I say a which the first time will be 1 plus x plus the number which is 5 um, plus the equal sign now this is really the time sign and this is the equal sign plus what a times the number is it'll run through the multiplication so what it does is it says 1 times 5 is 5 2 times 5 is 10 3 times 5 is 15 and so on and so forth 
In the previous example, the value for the counter variable in the for loop increases by one every time the loop runs. However, you can increase the value by another number if you want to use step as a keyword. So in this example, if we do the exact same thing, we would say step two, which means it would count by two. So the first time it would go through, I would have one, then I count by two, the next time I would have three, five, seven, nine. And it would skip over those other numbers. For this example, you would increase the value by two if you write the following code. If you don't know the loop count before you write the program, you could create a while loop for the for loop. When you create a while loop, you specify the condition that is true when the loop starts, but the computer evaluates the condition every time that the loop repeats. When the condition becomes false, the loop stops. Let's write the following program. If we say that a equals 10, while a is less than or equal to 100, print off a. Then in the next line it'll say a is then going to be equal to a plus 10. And this will crank through and while until our value for a is greater than 100. What it will do is count by tens. So we'll start with 10 because that's the original a value. a is still less than 100 so it'll print a equals 10. Then it'll reassign the value for a as a plus 10, which is 20. So it says end while, so it loops back up here. Now a is 20, which is still less than 100, and it'll go through. Then a becomes 30, because we add 10 to it. 30 is still less than 100. Now a becomes 40. a is 50, 60, 70, 80, and when it gets to a equals 100, It'll print it off, but now when I come back, A is greater than 100. It will be 110 at some point. Well, then it won't print. So that's why over here we see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Let's summarize what we've done here. So what we've learned how to do is write programs that evaluate logical conditions and perform operations based on those results. We've learned how to write programs that repeat one or more instructions, either a specific number of times or based on a logical condition. We should know how to create a program to convert one or more student scores from a percentage to a letter grade. Um, first ask the user to specify how many grades will be calculated. Then ask the user to specify the range, or the, the first percentage. And then convert it to the letter grade for the following criteria. Okay. So now this is a little trickier than it looks. Um, here's the criteria. They want us to say that if A... If, if it's 75% or more, then we convert it to an A. If the percentage is 75, uh, but uh, 75 but more than uh, e or equal to 60, convert it to B. If the percentage is less than 60 uh, or more, you know, between 60 and 35, convert it to a C. And if it's 35 or lower, convert it to a D. I'm going to use an actual grade. So let's close.